hello and welcome to the show. My autocross car of choice today is something a little bit different. I've got the classic IndyCar, the Watson Special Roadster from the latest DLC. It uh, is likely to be interesting. It's not the first classic race car to take on the autocross course. But, uh, yeah, the last one was the Mercedes, and that was a real handful. This is likely to be a very, very similar story. It is also starts off right at the very top of A-Class, which means, as far as upgrades go, not that there's a huge amount that we can do with it anyway, but they're still we're very, very limited to uh, what we can do. Now, tyre compounds, I would love to have a sport tyre or a race tyre on this car can't do it. I would love to upgrade the front tyre widths. Equally, that, that that doesn't work either. Puts us up into, well, S-Class. We can upgrade the rear tyre widths to 235s, which will keep us in A-Class. Uh, what else do we have in the way of options? Uh, well, we're going to want a diff. We're going to want to put a uh, race diff in the car. We can put a race drive line. It saves a little bit of weight, but not a huge amount. And then the rest of the stuff is pretty much engine. Well, there's four engine bits in here. We can do we can do fuel system actually to stay in A-Class. Uh, we can do ign ignition keeps us in A-Class as well. I'm guessing these probably won't. No, they'll jump us up into S, as will... Okay, not quite as high notice as I thought it might do, but, uh, yeah. I also like how little PI changes when we have a fair amount of power increase. It does suggest to me that this might be quite a handful. I'm kind of expecting that, really, from a from a classic race car. So we're going to have to do rear tyre widths. I say we're going to have to. It, this is the most sensible thing to do here, is to put the rear tyre widths on. Hopefully might give us a little bit more traction out of the slower corners. Can't do anything with aero, not an option that we have. Uh, differential is on. Again, I can put this on the car. It would be sensible to save save some weight. And then, well, if we can make the PI up, in fact, we can. We can get it to A700 with the use of the ignition. I'll just have a look now. That's 701. So with the sport ignition, we will have our car. 417 horsepower in a vehicle that almost 400 torque as well in a vehicle that weighs under one and a half thousand pounds that is a tremendous power to weight ratio but it's the handling that might be terrifying and is likely to be the the, the really rather tricky part with this vehicle well there is only one way to uh, find out now of course we are going to be taking the Watson around the Hockenheim Autocross track. It will have three laps in an attempt to go as fast as possible, more likely me attempting to keep it under control. Yes, it is uh, very unlikely to be getting anywhere near the top of the table. The big comparison really is going to be between this and the Mercedes, the W154, that uh, did a 2.12.4. That is the kind of lap time that we are aiming to beat with this, uh, with this car. I have no idea what we're going to be getting from this, other than it is likely to be quite terrifying and completely and utterly unsuited to uh, autocross. Visibility is great though. Visibility is uh, fantastic, which is always nice when it comes to uh, autocross. Wow, gear ratio is very, very long. Indeed, all oh, the brakes don't really work either. Okay, two things we have learned. The, <laughs> the gear ratios are tremendous and the brakes are, well, not. The turn-in is okay. It's so floaty. It's so floaty indeed and it is, in, it is also the first car now to hit that uh, outside concrete wall. We don't get any penalties for hitting the wall uh, out there. We can get away with that one. Okay, yeah, it's um, rather imprecise on the steering compared to the sort of vehicles that uh, I am used to tackling this course with. It just feels like everything is floating as we uh, head down here. Now, the speed, I'm going to imagine, is pretty damn good. If I could be flat out there and didn't have to brake so early... Oh, 
damn it, we've got that far without hitting the gate. Oh, we're going to hit that one. No, oh, no, we're going to hit all of them. Uh, oh, no, that's a reverse. Oh, I'm not gonna get... <laughs> My brain is not quite prepared for these, uh, for these long gears. Having the longer gears, though, does help us out in the sense that we don't have huge amounts of wheel spin when setting off from the lower speed sections. So the actual traction out of these corners is quite good. If I can get the blood... Just please turn! Please turn! Everything is just so vague in this uh, in this car. This spe <laughs> that is incredible speed though, up to 120 miles an hour almost, before getting slowed down there as we try and fire the car into the tunnel. And then we float about a little bit. Right, hairpin coming up now. Yet it's slowed down for here. Yeah, it's not as it's not as oversteery and, and so on as I was expecting. It's just the floatiness of everything. Trying to be really precise with the car is difficult when it's uh, kind of bouncing and moving, and it's kind of like nothing else I think I've driven <laughs> on on this on this game. Right, we can. Uh, do an okay job of this. Oh, and no, I'm trying to get on the power too soon. We don't have the grip to get away with that. Hey, oh, we clipped one of them. I think we hit about four gates. That's 20 seconds worth of time penalties with a little bit of dodgy driving and so on. It's going to be close between this and the Mercedes. That much is uh, is for sure. Now, the big, the big challenge with this car is going to be I need to be brave. It's going to be trying to find quite the, uh, the the limit. What can I get away with in this? If I want to go quick, I'm going to have to be relatively brave. But uh, yeah, oh, for God's sake, I've got to remember. Second gear just doesn't work through that uh, through that section. Yeah, I've got to be I've got to be brave, but equally I've got to be mindful that yes, this simply doesn't have the grip to carry incredible speeds through these gates. We're not going to be getting the 110 miles an hour, 113 I think it was we got in the Porsche, through that uh, section as we did last week. And I've also got to be careful, while the traction is pretty good, it can just let go. <sighs> Couldn't make the turn. That is not a gate that you normally have problems with. But uh, in this, I was just taking too much speed and couldn't get the car across in time. Can we take any more speed up here? A little bit. <laughs> it is so fast there, but it's so scary trying to get it slowed down that we can't quite go for a record-breaking speed from this car. Now, patience, I think. Patience and what precision I can muster in here is going to be key as we come up towards slowest gate on the track. Oh, God. It's such a slow change of direction. I've, I've complimented some cars on their fantastically quick changes of direction. The Porsche was good. The Renault 5 was amazing. This is not. It really struggles to get changed, especially in the slower speed sections. Really, really struggles to get uh, get changed and oh, survive those sections. Just trying to maintain speed, maintain momentum. Oh, we got some oversteer on the way out of there. I'm hoping that we could just brush past it and we'd be alright, but uh, wasn't quite uh, wasn't quite at the, the right angle and so on. Ah. Oh, please stop, please stop as well for there. Right, smoothly does it through these uh, final, final few gates. Can't get away with that either. We're going to have to be quite a bit more careful. Right. 223, I didn't actually see, I think I had two penalties in all of that, so yeah, this is a in interesting vehicle to drive, that is for sure. So it is on to the final run for this legendary race car. If I can keep it out of the barrels, that would be very helpful. I think there is perhaps a little bit of time, certainly, to be found. If I can be a bit braver, if we can be... Probably have to be nice and oh, extra smooth with this car. You're not going to get away with attacking the gates in the same way that you can with some vehicles. You simply don't have the grip in this. I've got to say, I expected all sorts of things from this car being incredibly unresponsive was not what uh, what I expected the handling characteristics to be like but uh, there we go I'm just gonna have to try and make the best of it really it is 
perhaps not going to look like the most spectacular of runs. I'm just going to have to sort of concentrate and, and focus on making sure get it through these gates and uh, yeah, try and keep everything under control. The slight lack of brakes is a bit scary, especially when you have got as much speed as this has in a straight line. Not being able to get it slowed down again is <laughs> slightly less than ideal, and I think I'll certainly find myself going a little bit slower into some of these gates because uh, I would rather be slower into them and focus on getting that getting that good run out of it. Again, I've done this with a few vehicles. If they don't have the grip to really carry the gate speed but they have acceleration focus on getting the car sorted out here for example and then accelerate away is uh, yeah gonna be the best strategy I think to get any speed whatsoever out of this car I mean, down here we are getting up to record pace it's about 100, 119 miles an hour before getting on the brakes and that's braking earlier compared to some of the quicker cars that's seriously seriously fast once more we try and get on the brakes. I've only used two gears. That's all we use around this course and I'm not even going to think about trying to go. In fact, that was a fairly big break and even then I was really pushing what the car could do on that uh, run there. Don't go towards the barrel on the outside. That would be unfortunate. Really struggling to get the front end turned in now. Be patient, you've just got to wait. Wait to get on the power through here. Now we can go. Don't get the car sideways. Run towards the line. Wow, that is quicker than I was expecting. 209. <laughs> that is not too shabby from the uh, from the road. So that's... Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to quite get that fast. That's what being smooth with this sort of vehicle does. That worked. That, that strategy worked exactly how... I uh, I had hoped that it, uh, <laughs> it would do. Yeah, that is really not quite what I was expecting from the car there. I, I As I said, I was expecting it to be, you know, that little bit oversteery, that little bit leery like a lot of the other classic race cars. But that's not what you get at all from this. It's just so very unresponsive. You can't get the front end to turn into the corners very well. And there's nothing that I can do about it with the upgrades you saw. I can't put bigger tyres on. I can't put better compound tyres on. Uh, or can't put bigger tyres on the front. Better compound overall. It'll go up to higher PI. The acceleration is phenomenal when you can use it. Unfortunately, there's only one place really where that acceleration uh, excels. Because the rest of it, there are still corners and braking zones to worry about. That uh, you can't quite make the most of it. But yeah, getting into... Two o well, under the two tens is quicker than I was expecting. It beats the Mercedes by two seconds. Mercedes uh, W one five four that I thought it would be fighting with. It is two seconds faster around here. It will put it in two. Where is it gone? I've lost track of my tables a little bit. Fifty second place. It will beat the Ford Deluxe Coupe. It beats the Dodge Daytona faster than the Cooper Works Mini in the F-Type Project 7. It does lose out fractionally to the Hot Wheels Bone Shaker, the Subaru SVX and the GMC Cyclone. But uh, it is a pretty damn respectable time for what is a very difficult car to drive with just very woolly handling is that's the best way i can describe <laughs> the way that this car gets through the quarters but if you drive it smoothly and make the most of where it is strong make the most of that acceleration then it uh, yeah can still set a half decent time i am slightly astounded by that one but uh, there we go that is going to be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye Thank you.